So far, we have covered a lot of ground with the NGRX store and effects. We've touched on effects ever so slightly. In the next chapter, what we're actually going to do is take a deeper dive into the effects where we can start to hook up things such as creating, updating, and removing those pizzas. So we'll, we'll be focusing on things like effects and reducers in much more detail in the next few chapters. Now, for this chapter, what we're actually going to do is set up the ability to load our toppings. Now, what we want to do, and I deliberately recorded it in this way to give you the information that we need so you can see the bigger picture of NGRX Store. Now, what we've done so far, we've got our app folder. Inside, we're using our router reducer. We're binding that router state to the actual NGRX Store. So this in itself is a great concept and we can go ahead and reuse this now anywhere that we like. Now what we've also done is set up things like our actions and we've loaded some pizzas, we've called some success inside an effect. So we'll jump down into the effect, we'll have a quick look at this. So we've done an effect, we've created the load pizzas, we're then getting those pizzas and dispatching another action. Then we then pick this up inside of our reducer where we have this load pizza success and then we convert the data structure into an entity and then bind it to our reducer. Now at the moment we only have one reducer, we only have one effect and we only have one set of actions. Similarly with our selectors, these were what we focused on in the last few videos, getting that entities and that router state hooked up so that we could return the entity that we wanted to. Now what we're going to do in this chapter is actually load the toppings. Now let's dive across to the browser and actually have a look at what we need to do to get our application working. So everything here pretty much works fine. We've got the pizzas being rendered out. These are our entities and we're collecting those via a selector and converting them to an array so we can pass them straight down into our ng4. Now when we click on here, there's obviously a lot of things missing. We don't have any of these toppings that we can click and select. Now the reason we don't have any of these toppings is because they actually exist in the database. So if you imagine this was some kind of pizza restaurant and you have multiple stores, it may be that in fact, one store has different toppings to another store. So we want to dynamically load them per pizza store. So that is why we can't see any of these toppings and they are dynamically rendered based on the JSON response that we get back when we hit forward slash toppings. So let's go back and what we want to do is initialize a load toppings, load toppings fail and load topping success. And we're gonna go through that process again. And this time it'll be much easier because we have a lot of boilerplate set up already for us. So we can now start to extend our application and plug new things in. So what we're actually going to do is set up a new set of actions similar to the load pizzas, the load pizzas fail, and the success. Now, we could copy and paste this and change a few things, but I like to actually enforce the understanding, and we're gonna type these things out ourselves. We can create toppings.action.ts. So this is where we're gonna keep everything similar to here. So we can close this file off and we'll code this line by line ourselves. So what we'll do, first off, we need to import that action, and we get that from ngrx slash store. So we know that we need to implement this action. We also, because this is the toppings action, we need to actually import the topping interface and we need to go back a few directories here into that models folder where we can pull out the topping model. So we've now got the interface available. We can start to create some actions and everything will work nicely. So let's start off underneath. We're gonna export a const called load underscore toppings. Now, I mentioned this earlier about creating these namespaces. And we're going to add products in here. Now, I mentioned why, because we can actually have multiple actions under the same name. Now, if you imagine we had a load toppings, and we could actually have load toppings in a completely different module, we might be doing something else in a bigger application with load toppings. Let's assume that it's part of the dashboard. So if we were in a dashboard, we might end up doing something like this. We have dashboard load toppings, and that is not going to conflict with any of the other actions and the reducers that are listening for these actions to be dispatched. So using an alias or a namespace 
and we have that load toppings. We keep these consistent via the module that we are using. So we are lazy loading this products module and we're saying every action will be namespaced with any actions inside of that products module. And you can start to see as we expand this, things start to make more sense. And when you look at it at a bigger scale, these things really slot into place. So what we can do is duplicate this and we're gonna create the first one as fail. We can say load toppings fail. And the third one, we're gonna say, this is going to be our success. We can again change the string to be load toppings success. So now it's time to create a few action creators. We already know these, we've covered them twice already. We've done our custom Redux store and we've already built our pizza actions. Now, if you can do these from memory, feel free to pause the video and just go ahead and see what you end up with afterwards. And we can then compare how you're learning in between. So I'm gonna go ahead. If you want to copy these along, feel free. So we're gonna say load toppings implements that action that we imported. And we just want a read only type here. So we're gonna say read only type equals load underscore toppings. So underneath we can say export class. This one will be load toppings fail. We want to implement that action as well. Now for this one, we want a read only type, which will then point to that load underscore toppings fail. So we're matching these up one by one. We should remember this pattern as we have learned this multiple times. Now for the fail, we again want a constructor. We're going to then say it's going to be public and we're gonna have a payload with a type of any. So the any type allows us to pass any type of error message back from the server. Now for simplicity and speed, we know how to do this one already, so we'll just duplicate this out. We can change this over to being the success, and similarly, we can create the load topping success. Now we imported the toppings interface above, so we need to actually use this in our success because in fact, from the server, we get back a topping array. And what I can do quickly is just show you in the db.json, if we go up to the top, we have the toppings. Each topping has an ID and it has its name. Now we could expand this. Each topping could have a variant of a price. We could allow multiple selections of extra toppings, these types of things. But this data structure management will give you that capability. So you've got all of the base knowledge that you need to then build out any kind of data structure in your NGRX store and learn how to compose things against things like the root estate and actually using the create selector to create your own different state selectors. So we get the toppings back. This comes down as a big array. We have all the IDs inside and this is actually what gets rendered in our form when we go to view a pizza or we create a new pizza. So we don't need this, we can close it off. Now, if you remember, there's that final thing that we need to actually do, and that's those action types. So we need to export a type called toppings action. And if you remember, this gets used inside of our reducer. So at this point, we can say load toppings, or it's going to be load toppings fail, or it's going to be load toppings success. So we can save this and you can see that this is just bumped this on a new line because the line length is getting quite long. Now it's interesting because when this bumps it onto a new line, it actually puts this character in front, whereas we actually wrote this out. So when we save it, it just adds these things for you so we can separate them onto new lines, nice and readable. So there's one more thing that we need to do and that's actually pass our new actions up a level. So we're gonna say toppings.action and this will then make itself available in any component now, we can dispatch any of these actions. So what we'll do is go into our container component into the product item. Now in here, we have the pizza that we set up, which is an observable, but now we want the toppings to be an observable. So anytime the toppings change, they get updated. We're then using that store select. And this will in fact be something like get all of the toppings. We can pass them down into the form and we can then continue as usual. Everything will just render itself out nicely. So let's go ahead and what we'll do inside the ng on a knit, we'll say this dot store dot dispatch, and we can say new from store. And when I hit this, you can see that we have load 
toppings. So we can call this and actually instantiate that we need to dispatch this load toppings inside the ng on init. Now, if you remember, we've actually done this already with the products component. So if we open this up for a comparison, underneath here, we're actually saying dispatch the load pizzas. So then the pizzas will load, we can navigate to a pizza. And at that point, we actually care about the toppings. So that's why we can say it here, we want to dispatch that load toppings. So that's it for this video. We're pretty much done with the actions. In the next video, we're gonna hook up our reducer and then we're gonna create some selectors and some further effects.